Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Jack, and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today, I'm going to be talking about Batman Beyond. Yes, it's not not the TV show, not the comic, but the live-action movie of Batman Beyond. If you didn't know, Batman Beyond was a spin-off to Batman the Animated Series back in 1999 to early 2000s. It ran for three seasons, a very short-lived show, a show that nobody wanted, but everybody loved. It was one of those shows that just came out of the blues somewhere. I myself watch it on kids quite a bit. It's a channel here in the UK. I couldn't watch it on Cartoon Network, which is the original channel it aired on, because I, I mean, I wasn't old enough to watch them shows. I didn't know about Batman back then. I was about three, I think, or I wasn't even born when the show ended, actually. That's a very good point. I wasn't even born when the show ended in 2001. Um, but this, this uh, movie that I'm going to be talking about, it's got me kind of excited. Nothing's been confirmed. It's all speculation. But I wanted to do a video on it because I wanted to get people's opinions on what they think of a Batman Beyond film. Uh, Batman Beyond is probably one of my most favourite Batman animated series out there. Besides from, of course, Batman the Animated Series. I have a lot of favourite Batman animated shows, to be quite honest. I might do a ranking of them more. I'm re-watching The Batman at the moment. Then I'm just going to watch every single animated show I have of Batman. And I'll do, I'll do a complete ranking for everybody on, on the end of it all. Once I finish my collection of the Batman animated shows. Uh, what do I think about this? Uh, Batman uh, being live. Batman Beyond live action. Um... I want it to happen. I wanted it. I was somebody who wanted it to happen about 10 years ago. I was watching the 66 Adam West. Um, they released the box set, I think, five, six, seven years ago now. Uh, they released it for the 75th anniversary. And, of course, I was somebody that wanted to see Adam West reprise the role as Batman, but not do that campy sort of film. Do like a darker Batman film, but he be the 90 year old Bruce Wayne. And him sort of trained Terry McGuinness to be Batman. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Of course, unfortunately, Adam West passed away before they even got the motion, before they even got the wheels turning on a Batman Beyond film. Before most people started talking about it. Do I think it's going to happen 100%? You know, it's going to happen at some point. Uh, I've done a Flash video, Ben Affleck's Returning of the Flash. So there's that video that's out there now that you guys can go check out. But the reason why I bring that up is because The Flash is also making, you know, it's making a return uh, for Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is returning in this Batman um, sort of Flash film. He's returning as the 90, 80, 89, 92 Batman, and I'm very much excited for that. Uh, you know, and that, that brings up some serious questions. Are DC preparing us for... His retirement at the end of Flash, him going home and realizing that actually, I can't do this anymore. And is that where HBO Max? We know they're going to greenlight loads of HBO Max films, most likely. Disney Plus are doing it. They're making movies for Disney Plus exclusively. Then they're doing cinema releases. This could be a HBO Max movie, and it would do fantastic. I think it'd do better on HBO Max than it would at the box office, because not many people are invested in Terry McGinnis's story. It's only like the late 90s and early 2000s kids and them die-hard Batman fans that really are into it. I myself love the show. I love Terry McGuinness as a character. He's a great Batman. And the, the, the thing with this film is you need to cast it right. So the, the casting I choose, it's a bit out there to be honest, but Michael Keaton is of course Bruce Wayne Batman like I've already said. And as Barbara Gordon, I'd, I'd have Judy Dench try and pull off an American accent. She looks so much like Barbara Gordon in the show. Um, but of course, she's older than Michael Keaton, so I don't know whether they'll go that route. But, I mean, you, you just got to get an old bat, bat, uh, an, an old woman in there to play Batgirl, uh, who is Commissioner Gordon now within the show. And the show's set in 2023, so if they start making the film for 20, in 2022... It could release around about the same time the film was, you know, we, we were supposed to have our Neil and Gotham now. Um, so the thing with this film, the, the one thing that I love about the idea of this film is that you could literally cast anyone in the role of Terry McGuinness. He's never been done before. He's a fresh new character on the big screen or on HBO Max. In, in live action, he's a new character. My personal pick would be Tom Holland. 
He's just finished up Spider Man. His his final Spider Man films, of course, with with Marvel and Sony, is ending in uh, is is in releasing in December twenty twenty one. And why I think it's a very good idea to have Tom Holland as Terry McGinnis is they're about the same age. Terry McGinnis was nineteen twenty when he took up the mantle of the Batman, and I, although Tom Holland's twenty five, he plays that nineteen twenty year old in Spider Man. He plays that young kid, so. The, the, the funny thing about this is, <sighs> Batman Beyond with with Tom Holland, I could see working really well. Everyone's a big fan of Tom Holland. I've watched Cherry, which he was in. I've, of course, seen all the Spider-Man films he's been in. I've seen the Avengers films he was in. I've seen... Uh, there was one film I didn't like him in, and that was the one he did with Daisy Ridley. It slipped my mind. Uh, walking Chaos, that's it. If I remember that, or, or Chaos Walking. I can't remember which way it was around, but I believe that was the film. So he's, he's done a load of films under his belt. And I think it's time he takes on Batman. He could do a trilogy of Batman Beyond and then go into Bond, which I'll talk about later on in another video. But I think it'd be pretty cool to see Michael Keaton and him sort of have discussions and have like little moments within the film. I think he'd be an amazing Terry McGuinness. He wouldn't be a good Bruce Wayne, but he'd be an amazing Terry McGuinness. Uh, and and you like you could say oh he he would do a good Robin he would not be a good Robin because the way I see it is he's a leading actor he's not that sort of sidekick like if you look at the Robins in the Batman films they're all sort of side actors like Chris O'Donnell was a leading actor within Batman for Reverend Batman and Robin but he was the sidekick I could see him being the hero and how I think the story should start and is you should take some things from the season, from the series. So, you should definitely start with, of course, Terry's father's death, the Joker gang, everything. Don't change that whatsoever. What I do think, though, is that you could potentially pull off a... this. If you pull off this film, you could explore so many other options. I think they should do the return, to the, the return of the Joker... Batman Beyond in the right, future, maybe not as a second or third film, it's but if they went Beyond 3, wrong. they could do um, that. Freak. I just don't think doing a Return of the Joker movie would be good, because if you've seen that film, it's just going to be the same thing, whereas you can make this unique, make this film unique. You could do the original three of Terry McGuinness, which we've seen in the animated show, copy that, but then create Dead? reasoning, like the reasoning is because his dad's died, he wants to take oh my God. Teaching him that revenge is not only the way, but vengeance is. He oh, then also Terry. needs to go down some sort of path, I think, and the story okay? doesn't need to be the same after that. I think. Mom, what happened? You should turn oh, and make a completely different the story sense in like you, like you have all the Where's cast Dad? members in sense in. Honey, you know, I... Dana, his girlfriend, and you have uh, Willie, who is one of the villains. Dad. Here. You have Flash. Who is one of the Dad. Dad! McGinnis so, leaves behind two I think it was sons. Anyway. See here with his former wife, Mary. I've been doing loads of videos. Among the mourners was, was McGinnis's employer, Derek well. Powers. I pledge to use whatever influence I have to see that doing the creatures this Batman pay film from Mark Hayden will do wonders, because it can continue on with ninety with with, eight, with 89's Batman film. It was about Dad. And I know, huh? I'm hoping if Why they went this bed, route, okay? they would show us Marlon Wayne's Robin. Like, just just let him have a guest appearance. Pay him, pay pay him some money to that show up. That friend of yours, Dana. That's called. all I'm asking. For. She left her number. Um, have of course, Marlon Wayne started robbing it in the Batman Returns, and then got pushed to Batman Three. Tear, you haven't Batman said a word all day. Don't you want to talk? So, Why would you open the, door, <laughs> Mom? The, th what? the thing with this, they were jokers. He wouldn't have opened the, the door. He would have looked well. first. How they, they traced me back to him. Honey, we don't know if it's the same gang. Can't wait around. You've got to stop. I should have been there. I could have helped him. I, I could have done something. No. Flash. Yes! I'm not afraid of those guys. We could have fought them off, me and Dad. We could have fought. I just think he left because he knew it was career suicide. I yelled at him, Mom. He stayed within the role. He grounded me, and I wouldn't listen. Just like Val Kilmer said. That, you know, it wasn't going to work between him and Josh. I'm such a jerk. So with that being said, would you guys like Hurry to Hurry up! HBO Max I'm opening as fast as I, I can. So many HBO Max You're some help, you know that? I it's not my junk. Uh. I guess that's my fault too.